Untold story of SR-71 Blackbird US topped secret mission and a superhero. SR-71 Blackbird achieved during its active career from the 1960s to the 1990s is impossible, partly because, as a spy plane, their roles are to collect imagery intelligence, signals intelligence, and measurement. Much of its anecdotal history remains behind a veil of security. From its very first test flight, three days before Christmas in 1964, it straddled the boundaries between physics bending speed and safety, top secret missions and public rock star status, and even between Earth and space. Now asking in its second decade of retirement, Blackbird stands as a towering figure in the history of aviation, one which still holds more than its share of records. These are many things you, probably, didn't know about the SR-71 Blackbird. The SR-71's official speed record, 2, 193.13 miles per hour Mach 3.2, has stood for nearly 40 years. In July of 1976, the Blackbird celebrated the United States centennial by setting an outright speed record for a manned jet. This is that very plane landing after that record setting run, and while a few pilots took their Blackbirds faster, they weren't on an official two way record run. The very first Blackbird was built using Soviet titanium that the CIA smuggled into the US. Let that one sink in for a second. As it turns out, the USSR produced the finest titanium in the world, and since the landing gear and most of the plane's skin is titanium, Uncle Sam had a national security level need for Soviet titanium. Life's funny like that sometimes. The engines are roughly as powerful as an ocean liner. Each of the Pratt & Whitney J-58 jets engines produces 34,000 pounds of thrust. The Blackbird is 105 feet long, which is absolutely huge for a two-seat aircraft. B.F. Goodrich had to develop special tires because it's so heavy. It's so damn heavy, 170,000 pounds. The founder of Polaroid was in charge of the team that evaluated the Blackbird's design. If you think about it, it makes sense, the SR-71 was a spy plane, and Dr. Edwin Land knew a ton about photography. Those cones in front of the jets are both incredibly complex and vitally important. They're really part of the throttle control system moving around to ensure the rate of airflow into the engine remains constant. Without them, too much or too little air rushing into the intake, airflow properties change at hypersonic speeds, can cause a near instantaneous and absolutely catastrophic loss of control. The first testing location? Area 51. Lockheed built the planes in Burbank then loaded them onto trucks headed to everyone's favorite conspiracy theory location. To fly or even work on the plane, everybody was required to be married. You not only had to be between 25 and 40 years old and something called emotionally stable, you had to be married to even be eligible for consideration to work on the plane, let alone fly the damn thing. Huh? The SR-71 is actually the third Blackbird. The 812, shown, is its extremely similar predecessor that also flew more than three times the speed of sound. Perhaps unsurprisingly, it was operated by the CIA. This was the Blackbird's interceptive variant. It never reached full on production. But the YF-12 evolved from the A-12 and ultimately led to the SR-71. After setting several speed records, the prototypes saw fruitful careers helping NASA with research. For all its advanced tech, the Blackbird's true worth was as a propaganda tool. LBJ made a public announcement that a 2,000 miles per hour plane was in the works in February of 1964 fully 10 months before even the first test flight. 
when LBJ announced the plane to the public, he changed the name, maybe by mistake. He controversially called it the SR-71, which obviously stuck, instead of the RS-71. Some say that mistake was intentional, reflecting a shift from reconnaissance, strike to strategic reconnaissance, while others contend it was purely a mistake. On December 22, 1964, the SR-71 took off for the first time. This is that plane, on that day, taking off on that flight. Stop for a moment and think about the significance of this photograph. The Blackbird's missile avoidance technique was a middle finger to would-be attackers. During its decades of service, enemies with itchy trigger fingers fired in excess of 1,000 missiles in the hope of taking down the high flyer. Not a single one was ever shot down. It could photograph an entire swath of North Korea in seven minutes. Quite literally, you could start listening to Stairway to Heaven while an SR-71 pilot was 80,000 feet over China, and by the time you were on to the next song, he'd already be over the sea of Japan. The cockpit windows are two inches of quartz. Due to their location, they routinely hit 600 degrees, F, and regular glass would warp at those temperatures thus distorting the pilot's vision. The flight suit was essentially built for space. Engineers adapted it from the Gemini missions, and it would later be adapted further into the space suits you know today. The fuel tanks SR-71s spent a lot of time behind refueling planes. Those engines burned upwards of 44,000 pounds of fuel each hour, making refueling every 90 minutes a necessity. Making that number even more impressive is that, due to what's known as the ramjet effect, air and fuel compressing at supersonic speeds, blackbirds became more fuel efficient at speeds above Mach 2.0 and typically covered about 2,500 miles in that 90 minutes. JP-7 production caused a nationwide shortage of bug spray. Really? One of the ingredients in JP-7 just so happened to be a crucial part of flit mosquito repellent. Bearing in mind the huge amount of fuel we're talking about here, Shell didn't exactly have enough supply to meet the newly increased demand so mosquitoes everywhere caught a lucky break. Five years into retirement, it unretired. In a move that presaged Brett Favre by more than a decade, the Blackbird came out of retirement for a series of NASA projects, retiring again, for good this time, by 1999. It was the ultimate alpha in a sky. This video for what is undoubtedly the single greatest 2000 miles per hour smackdown story ever declassified. The super super short moral of the story, if you're in a state of the art fighter jet, bragging to anyone within radio range about how fast you're going, you'd better make damn sure there's not someone else cruising along at roughly triple your speed that can't wait to shut you up. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe.